All right. What we tried to do here is we've all laid real stone and culture stone, right, everybody? Those of you that haven't, try it. Um, got, my origins were real rock. We did 330 real rock jobs before I ever said to myself, there's got to be a better way. And then I started synthesizing rock. And the reason being was, as a contractor, I'm not trying to uh, but compete with you guys. I didn't have the, the business that we do now in mind. I'm a contractor competing, and I'm looking for a bottom line increase, you know, make my more money. Um, synthesizing rock in every case has always been a benefit over use of real rock. In callbacks, logistics of trying to get rock together without it busting or cracking or leaking in the case of water features, um, it's, it's synthesizing rock has always been the better. Look at cultured stone that's on the market, has been for 35 plus years, okay? It's nothing new. We call it the lick'em stick'em. You take a, a vapor barrier, you put yourself a scratch coat with the chicken wire, you take, or lath, you take then and you start mortaring one rock on at a time. And these rocks, depending on the manufacturers, 800 to 1800 PSI, not 12,000. You drop one of those rocks, they break. You scratch it with the back of a ballpoint pin. You can scratch it. The skilled masonry contractor. Now, variety of rocks. This is, this is the most pain in the butt rock to lay, one at a time. River rocks, probably the easiest, the fastest. A good masonry contractor can only lay about 100 square foot of river rock. This stuff, real time, maybe 50 square feet a day. Well, this panel is 15. These, these three panels is 50 square foot. That's all you're getting. I'll install these in minutes, and they're stronger. And when done, it's a monolithic system, not a segmented. All these little rocks are made with a 4 to 1, 5 to 1 sand cement mixed with some perlite, vermiculite, or styrofoam as a lightweight aggregate. Why did they put the lightweight aggregate in it? With the scratch coat and the... Uh, rock and the mortar and the grout, you're at 15 pounds a square foot with cultured stone. You've got a weight issue there on a structure. Maybe the structure wasn't engineered to have that additional weight of real rock. A lot of times in brick and real rock, we'll come out and pour a footer here and bear directly on it and just tab tie into the building for, for to, so it doesn't fall off. But there's no weight on the building, okay? Cultured stone is designed to be able to be put on a normal house and not overload its footer. This is, this is going to do better than that. It's going to half as much weight when installed. But then again, it's monolithic. Instead of having a bunch of little bricks or rocks that are separate that are one type of mud and then mortaring them with another type of mud and then grouting them with still yet another type of mud, you've got an expansion and contraction problem we talked about with the uh, other rock companies that are out there where you're, you've got two different muds. They expand and contract at different rates, and sure enough, soon enough, it's going to delaminate. It's going to crack. This won't do this to you. Marcos, uh, uh, Daryl, what these guys have done is they did screw on the interlocking corner. Now, corners inside and out are one of the biggest pains in, in the bottom that you're ever going to... It takes more time to do corners than it does any other field you fly through it. We've created, in several different styles of rock, the interlocking corners. Inside, outside, we've got ledge caps for trims. We've got door window trims for side... We've got a lot of different accessory pieces, but this stuff installs quick, real quick, and mudless. In most all cases, mudless. Um, the, the skill level of these two gentlemen, these guys make rock, and they make all kinds of rock, and they're skilled at it. But using two guys that are less paid than them, which we're, we're looking for guys that are less paid. You guys know anybody? No. But some, some less skilled employees can install this with, without even really thinking about it. There's no real skill in it. Like a masonry contractor that can lay rock as good as this, you're paying high dollar, and he's not able to produce much that quick. So what I want these guys to do right now is just slide this together. And I got those, uh, those four-inch screws, which are galvanized or stainless. You don't want to use a, a non-galvanizer, you know, because you're going to have a problem with rust, potentially. Because they are, the heads are going to be sunk into this and then touched up with a little bit of our grout mix so you don't see the screw head. We're going to screw right through the rock where, as in the river rock panel, we generally, most cases, will go in the grout joint and then we'll just touch it up with a little bit of grout. So, this, this, in other words, this, this, the screw is just beneath the surface. If it's of non-stainless steel or if, if it's not stainless steel or, or galvanized, it's going to rust and it's going to show bleed through the surface. 
Now, that joint just, boom, sweet together. And, and right now, it is, depending on the squareness of the floor and the walls, the plum, you know, you may have a little bit of gap there. We can either grind and make the fit better if we have it tweaked, or we can come back in. We're going to do this on several of the rocks. We'll take our texture mix, throw it in that joint, let it tack up for about 10 minutes, and just strike it carve it out and it you'll see it's seamless. When we get done with this, we want this to look like a masonry contractor came out and lay one stone at a time. These two guys within five minutes will have what one guy will take all day to do. And but yet the strength, the longevity, everything about it. The other thing about cultured stones is you'll see they have about eight different styles of rock, but in each style they got eight different colors. Now if you're if you're design is this color and you're trying to match that color and you don't find the same color in what they offer, we can make this any color you want and we can do so lickety quick. It's, it's a really fast process and long lasting on top of that and pennies on the dollar as far as the total cost. Again, notice what we've done here. Because this is drywall, we're inside. Normally we're on an out exterior wall. In most cases on a frame building it's plywooded means I can drop a screw anywhere I want and I'm going to hit something. Notice the studs here. This is drywall and it's not going to take a screw. It's not going to hold. So they've located the studs. So you can actually, you know, on a, on a 16 or 2 foot, you can screw into studs. I prefer the, 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 uh, the, the, the sheeting of plywood if it's there. If it's not, you've got to find your studs. Metal studs, wood studs. Uh, if you didn't have sheeting, you can still install this. Um, typically, I would want about 8 screws in this panel and that's going to hold it. Now you see in these screw heads we're going to actually take care of them with a little bit of our uh, muds later as we go through this process. Once I get some of this stuff installed then we're going to go back and start mudding different aspects to it and, and finishing it off. Um, now this this was um, used just now in different to the one that Marcos was using. In the case of this right now Typically, this is about two and a half inches of relief. On this particular stone, it's popped out. You see where he put that? A screw, four inch screw, would have definitely hit that stud. You got a half inch of drywall. You got the, the probably an inch. So you've got enough there to bite with a normal screw. In the cases where you don't, we've got these lags that are, well, I can get these up to eight inches long if I had need of it. You don't need that, but if you did, it's there. Um, Again, we're going to cover over this. We don't want to see this when we're done. Can I have a fender washer over there? A lot of times, like if you look at Skyler's, we're going to go over to Skyler's house, and we actually have this on the website. We took a chimney of his that was old brick, and we pinned a 4 by 8 sheet with four lag bolts right through the rock with a washer to give us, the head of this is kind of small, and we went one size up. This is quarter. I think we went 3 eighths. At any rate, that's, that could pull out. So to give it a little more head, we put the fender washer on. We put a lag uh, lead anchor on there. We drilled through there, stuck the lead anchor into the brick, and then tightened it up and sucked it up. We had four of these. These are big. These will hold like 600 pounds, where a screw will only hold about 200. And we need about four of these for a 4 by 8 panel. Here, I probably wouldn't have used that there because if I was going to use this, because maybe the 4 inch isn't enough. If I look down, this this one rock pops out quite a bit. Maybe your 4 inch wouldn't have worked here. But what I would have sought on that same line here, I would have sought rocks that were less, pop, less popped out, and I know I could have penetrated it. So that's that. Go ahead and finish. If you can, use the screws. I'll, I'll be reluctant to use on a wood framed wall. I'm going to use screws. I don't need that. The lead anchors and the lags generally when I need deeper penetration or I'm trying to fix to a masonry surface. I like the Tapcon screws. There's also a screw, uh, GK Fasteners on the web has a screw man that you can drill right in through our panel because you can take a regular drill into our panel. If you look at this uh, drill right here, it's just a regular wood or steel bit and I'm going to take, it's not masonry, I'm going to take it right through the panel. And it's, I'll use this time and time again. You don't do that with regular cements. Take cultured stone and take this drill bit, you're going to do it once. That's it. This is a composite material. So it's, 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 it's e easy to uh, drill with using normal tools. Um, the Tapcon screws though, the, not the Tapcon, but the GK fasteners, has a bit that's got a uh, masonry bit on the end of it, which we don't really need, but it's nice. Drill through the panel, drill right into the concrete, and then take it back out. 
you put it back in. Take it.